What's going on everybody? It is your man Cleveland Terry and today we're going to talk about cue points. More importantly, how to set them up, how to make them work to your advantage, and then just kind of optimize Serato a little bit to make it a little easier for you. You ready to talk about it? Let's go. All right guys, if you're new here, this is what I do. I do tutorials, I do gear reviews, I do day in the life videos, and anything else that tends to pertain to the DJ music industry. If that sounds like fun to you, make sure you hit that subscribe button located right below. Now, people have been talking to me on my Wake Up In Cleveland show, which I do on Twitch, about the need for proper explanation of cue points. I didn't think it was that big of a deal, but apparently it is, especially for new people. So we're gonna take you through a quick kind of down and dirty demo session of how I do my cue points. Now, everybody does their cue points differently, and there are different schools of thought depending on what style of DJ you are. This is more for the traditional DJ, club DJ. This is how I feel like you would set it up. Also, even though we're gonna be using Serato as our example, these rules apply to any software you're using. Record box, DJ, virtual DJ, they all are gonna apply the exact same way. So if you click on the standard layout, you get this. All the cue points are lined up from top to bottom, and it's the way they've always done it. It's the old school Serato way. But ever since they have opened up all of the mixers to have eight pads, well, using it this way can be a little confusing. So Serato has fixed this by making the layout look the same way your controller or your mixer will look. So it's kind of a one-to-one -one comparison. So the first thing we have to do is we have to move over into settings and we have to move to library and display and we're gonna to move to the display area and we're gonna change this performance pad cue layout. Once we click on that and we go back, now the layout is set up more like your standard pads. Now, before we go into why we do cue points a certain way, we're gonna move over and we're gonna make a couple of changes right off the bat. So let's move over to DJ preferences. We're gonna make sure that this sort cues and loops chronologically is on. Now, this is controversial for some people because there is a different school of thought depending on how you look at it. You see, if you are a scratch DJ or Red Bull guy and you're creating routines, you might wanna have like your initial cue points on the top, maybe the first one or two, but then you wanna have like your sample scratches and things like that on the bottom so they're away from it so you can kind of delineate which one is which and it makes it easier to do it. That's the way they do it. However, a lot of people, myself included, prefer to have them in chronological order. If you have a cue point that starts at zero, and you have a cue point that starts at four minutes in, that's cue point one and cue point two. If you put a cue point two minutes in, the two minute one now becomes cue point two and the other one shifts to cue point three. Chronological order. It works, it works well for me anyway. Okay, scroll down to the on song load. Now, these two you wanna have on. You wanna have the play from start on and you wanna have the play from first cue point. Setting the play from start means at least if you don't have a cue point there, if you if it's the first time you've ever played that song and you have to quickly shift over, that song is gonna play at the start of the song. The next one you wanna have turned on is this play from first cue point. That means if you have a cue point selected, no matter if you have play from start on, play from first cue point supersedes the play from start. So. If your song starts on the beat and you wanna just quickly shift over to it, that's what you're gonna get. Cue points are basically jump points throughout the song. Like if you're a Star Trek fan, it'd be places you would beam to. And you have these things assigned so you can quickly get to them without having to play the entire song. So they're, they're jump markers, basically. Now everybody uses them a little differently. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to take you through a empty song and a song that's not copywritten so we can play that. Okay, so let's load in a song that we've never loaded in before. We're gonna load in this Top Speed by NBHD Nick. Now, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set the initial cue point for the song, just to get that locked in. I like to use a cue point in the beginning no matter what. So say for instance, I know that in the beginning there's like a, maybe like an intro or something like that, and then the next part is where the beat kicks in. I still put a cue point right in the beginning because for whatever reason, if I need to go back to that intro, and I don't set a cue point for it, it's gonna be really hard to get back to it in the course of mixing. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it 
up, pick it up. Ooh. You see the drippy, I'm fitted up. Fit it up. Okay. So this one has what I would call two specific cue points you want to do. So you want to do the one on the pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. And then, then I would do another one on the actual beat part. The reason why I'm queuing up the pick it up part is because once you start to get a little more creative with your mixing, that's going to be something that you would, you would bring in early. Or maybe you throw that before you're bringing in the next song. It's kind of a cue to let people know what you're doing. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to label this. A lot of people don't know that you can label your cue points. Label your cue points because it's going to help you out. I label mine in two different ways. I have intro, verse, and then hook. Okay, and then maybe outro or bridge. So those are my things. But then if a song has something that I really want to make sure I remember or it comes in a little differently, then I will name it. For instance, pick it up. I know that that pick it up part is right there. Then we're going to call this the verse. And that's it. Now I have a lot of friends that prefer to use the number method. So maybe the intro, it says 16 bar intro and then eight bar intro and then one bar intro. The pick it up is technically a one bar intro into the verse. But in my mind, pick it up makes a lot more sense than just one bar intro because then I have a, I have a frame of reference and you can name them however you want, but this is what works for me. Now, this particular part of the song is really going to be my cue point to let me know that I'm mixing out right here. So at this point, I would just name this actually mix out. So now we're gonna load up this song called Sweet Talk. Now I've already set up the first cue point, but the reason why I wanna show you this one is because it's a little different than your average song. So let's take a listen. The verse doesn't start on the one. If you set a cue point for the one, you're going to be past the beginning of the verse and it's going to come off sounding a little weird. So we don't want to do that this time. So instead, what we're going to do is we are going to go back and set the cue point right at the beginning of the verse, which is actually on the snare. So we're going to snare in, snare in to verse. The only thing else we would do is we would move to the end for to set up mix up points or if we have a bridge. So what I would do is I would set a cue point right here, right on the kind of bridge. And then I would set one more for the outro right here. Now I have two points of the song because sometimes you might want to mix it on the bridge other times you might want to let the bridge play and then mix out on the next part. One big reason why you have eight cue points and you should use uh, as many as possible is because you want to be able to kind of adjust and account for any mistakes you make. Because sometimes, let's say for instance, I wanted to mix out on the bridge, but for whatever reason, I missed it. Talking to somebody, if that was the only mix out point, I lost my ability to mix out. But you set a cue point to it, you can always jump right back at the appropriate time, of course. So have some kind of safety outs to use. That way you can get out because that's really important. So look, there's no hard and fast rule to setting up cue points. You have to set up cue points the way your mind works. I link it up a lot of times by the song. So if I know, for instance, here comes the hot stepper, okay? If I know that part's coming in, instead of saying snare, I'll say, here comes the hot stepper. That way I know that when I hit that cue point, the start of it says, here comes the hot stepper. That's it. I know exactly where it's supposed to be. I know where it's gonna work. It may not help you, but like I said, everybody does this differently. My whole job right now is just to kind of show you that there are different ways to do things. And so hopefully this helped you. If it didn't, it is what it is. <laughs> if you want me to do more of these types of videos in there, leave it in the comments below. Let me know because it's not something that I've typically done, but uh, it kind of feels like this is maybe something that some of you may be interested in. All right, guys, if you found what I said are useful, hit that like button. If you found what I said are really useful, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you follow me on the Instagrams and the Twitters and get on my Discord. Information is in the description below. That's where the link is. And guys, 
Always a pleasure. If I don't talk to you later, we'll talk soon. Peace.